What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. It's so great to see each and every one of you guys watch me cook up another delicious recipe. The sun's peeking out today. It's not really that cold on this beautiful winter day. A bit grey, but I'm in a tea. I've got my mate. And we're going to make this day even better by whipping up a delicious meal. So I've lost count how many times I've had this meal. It's a classic kiwi roast. I remember back in the day, always going to my white friend's house and they will whip up a classic roast. Wasn't the tastiest thing, but you know, I had some, it was an interesting experience to say the least. We're going to take a trip back to nostalgia land and I'm going to whip it up my way. We're going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, sprinkle a little bit of seasoning on there. And all you got to do is sit back, relax and enjoy the content. First step before we do anything else, I've got a pot, any vegetable leftovers that I have, chicken bones, i got heaps of stock guys, or like vegetables that I need to use for stock, so I'm loading this up, get that all in, boiling water to cover, so this is just gonna trick away at, you know, whatever medium heat, it's gonna release all its flavours, and by the time we need to use this, it's going to be ready. I peeled the skins and I've chucked them in the stock. And we're going rustic cuts. Nice big fat chunks. This is going to be the focal point of the gravy. And I just cut them into nines. Just like that. They'll braise away, melt down. I always like being hands on my food because it just adds mana. You know, make sure your hands are clean. Obviously, your fingernails aren't long. Or if you do have long fingernails, give it a wash, get that nail brush under there. You can see the onions are broken down, the carrots are still big, chunky. It's going to retain texture, it's going to melt away. Next up we're going to make some Yorkie puds for our roast. Yes, I know there will be people saying, oh Yorkie puds is an English thing. Bro, New Zealand's first settlers, they come from English, Irish, Scottish descent, even I think Welsh. So if there's any similarities, good on you for noticing them. And the white people here always love a good Yorkie pud. That starts with some eggs. I'm gonna give this a beat. We got a little bit of salt and flour. Sift the flour in. And don't over mix it. We're just going until it combines. They just soak up all the flavor, all the gravy. And it's just like an oven fried bread. If I was to just describe it. All right, once we got zero lumps, that's all we do. There's, this is literally the Yorkie put better. How easy is that? Go into the fridge until I need it. It's literally that easy, Yorkie puts. I introduced it to my family and they go feral for a day. It's so good, so, so, so delicious. Get the bird on it. Just give it a little pat down, a little pat dry. I'm cooking in a non-stick oven dish and that's just so, for convenience for all you guys watching, you might not have whatever I have and I always like to switch it up every now and again. So you don't want to give it, you don't want to put this on direct heat. So we can't give our chicken a nice sear. But I always love to switch it up to show you different ways and tricks that you can do regardless of your situation. All right, chicken in the dish, olive oil. We're coating our chicken in olive oil. If you don't have olive oil, any kind of oil. Inside the bird too. So there's the main cavity. Here's the second cavity. And I'm going through, just getting my fingers in and around lifting the skin up from the flesh we'll do one at a time so i've got my fingers in i'm just going in a lot of people like to put butter under the skin so it goes directly on the flesh that's also delicious a nice herb butter sage butter with the chicken maybe i'll do that for another video but we're doing this and all we're doing all we're going to be putting under the skin is salt and pepper seasoning you got to be gentle but not afraid at the same time Grab it from the carcass end and we're just seasoning with salt and pepper. Mm. 
Salt's done, time for pepper. That, so it closes the whole carcass up. For the rope guide, I just go fingernail below the drum and thigh joint. Close that up. Put a little bit of pressure, and we're just going around again a couple times. Just so when we do our knot, this doesn't move. Like, get that tight. And you can see it doesn't really move that much. Get your knot ready. If you want the if you want the rope tighter, you can pull your first lot of crossovers, and then pull your knot through. Get rid of the excess. And this is our chicken. Nicely tied up. I added some garlic to the onions and carrots and I'm just sprinkling it around the chicken. Hit the surrounding with a little bit of olive oil. Salt on the veggies, salt on the skin. Don't forget that pepper. I don't really hit the skin with pepper, but that's it. And we're just gonna chuck it straight in the oven. In the oven, 220 celsius and you can see it's not on the bottom it's not on the middle it's on the top because i'm going to show you a little trick later on when it's fully cooked how to get that crispy skin say goodbye in 50 to 60 minutes it'll be done bro these these are new zealand's i don't want to say best kept secret bro these are called yams i've tried to research about the origin story about yams but all i get is yams red I think it's in New Zealand, or like it grows real mean in New Zealand. I think originally they could be from South America, but I totally could be wrong. And these things are so fucking delicious and blows my mind. Essentially, they're like a carb or a starch. You can have a look at the inside. They smell fresh. They are super naturally zesty, but they're not sweet. They're refreshing, zesty. So that's trippy as, eh? That's real trippy. They just go in the bowl whole. Hit it with olive oil, salt, pepper. You can cut them up like this, but I find when they're whole, they just stay true to what they're about. The whole maggot texture, maggot look. You can have a look. They just look, they just look like maggots. I know saying that you probably don't want to eat it and you're just like, oh, uh, but nah. Bro, this thing, insane. Chuck them in, and they'll roughly take like 45 to an hour. All in all, they'll be ready the same time as our chicken. So, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. In my opinion, a classic kiwi roast cannot go without this one thing. Leeks and cheese sauce. To prep the leek, cut the bottom. And all these dark green leaves, we don't really want to eat that. I mean, you can, it's just super fibrous. Usually they're filled with heaps of dirt. You can see, leeks are super dirty. So I'm just gonna go with a vertical cut. And we're just opening it up. Letting the water get into each and every like little segment. But to be honest, it's only on the outside. So I'm gonna give this a clean and we'll be back. Bro, these grow so nice in New Zealand. They always seem to be super cheap. Real affordable. And I'm just cutting them. Not into like little discs. Because I mean I already vertically cut them. But little segments like this. This is a real old people kiwi classic. They always seem to love their leeks. Always seem to love their cabbage. Leeks just grow real mean in New Zealand. However, it's not going to be traditional. It's going to be my take. So good. I'm just transferring everything to a bowl now. Just to make it easy. That starts with butter. Get that melted. And it's definitely the oldies. The oldies love their leeks and cheese sauce. If they're the healthy ones, because I mean, there's different kinds of them, alright? Like there's the ones that know what's up and they put the leeks in the cheese sauce. The ones that don't know what's up, just... <laughs> they'll either roast it or just like saute with the tiniest amount of oil and no salt. No pepper. So I'll say I was blessed. If I'm, if I'm remembering the leeks in cheese sauce, I was blessed. I've got my pot on medium heat. 
Just letting the butter get a little bit toasty. Oh, you can see that. Have a look at the butter, you can see the milk solids have caramelized. And we can go in with our leeks. We're giving this a little saute. Yeah, they incorporated. So I'm thinking about my childhood in there, right? I remember just being in primary school, like asking the kids, or you know, like I just remember the kids saying, Oh, I went to Nana's house and we had leeks. And I was like, Leeks? And I was like, Oh, those are yum, no? And they're like, No, I hate leeks. And I like thinking about it now with my adult brain, they definitely would have just had boiled leeks. That sh I don't know about that, man. We're gonna hit it with some flour and stir that in. We want to cook the flour out, but we don't want to let it burn. It smells like the flour's cooked out. Going with your milk. And just get that incorporated. I added the milk in two separate batches. Please. You can make it easier by doing this motion. You're just shaking it back and forth while giving it a whisk. You can see, smooth apart from the leeks. We're gonna go in with however much cheese that you want. And so essentially the residual heat is melting the cheese. Hit it with some salt and pepper. Okay, here's the result. Caramelized nicely. You got some caramelization on the pan. Even little burn spots, it's all gonna incorporate so much flavor into the gravy. Eh? We need all of this. I've got some of that chicken stock. And I'm just going cleaning it with a wooden spoon. All of that residual is gonna just lift up. You wouldn't wanna do this on any direct heat unless you got like one of those stainless steel roasting trays. My one non-stick. This is a good cheat way how to get all the flavor off. For those tricky corners, you can use the back end of a wooden spoon. If you got residuals, just get some boiling water in there. All that's left is to give Old Mayo Blitz. Just gonna hit it with a cornstarch slurry. The only thing we got left to do now is our Yorkie puts. Can you see there? Just have a look, just have a look. Almost like pancake batter, like a real thick pancake batter. Muffin tray and some vegetable oil. Fill up the molds a fifth of the way high. This goes into the oven and we're gonna preheat it at 190 Celsius until the oil starts smoking. So I'll give it 15 minutes. All right, here's the muffin man. We're gonna pour this batter half fill these muffin trays, all right? Only half. When you pour them in, they need to have a little bit of a sizzle, but we're not going crazy. It doesn't need to start frying it straight away. I recommend to chuck it on a tray because sometimes they will like to spill over. All we need to do is wait, cook it 20, 25 minutes, depending how much batter you put in. And if you haven't seen what a Yorkie put looks like, you haven't tasted one, easy as recipe, go follow it, it will come out perfect just like mine. Oh, the Yorkie puts. Fresh out of the oven, they are the best. They are crispy, spongy, delicious. Here we are, here's another angle. I'm telling you right now, these, will elevate your roasts to like a whole different dimension. Little fried breads. With everything ready, we can go carve up our chicken now. Get rid of that string. And you know how our bird was before? How it was just all loosey-goosey open up. Not much effort. We'll go one at a time, right? Pull, pull, pull. Perfect drum and thigh section. Again, same thing on the other side. Just slowly, 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 and it comes off by itself. Flip the chuck over. 
you got two bits right here that's called the oyster you want to take that out save that for yourself because this is the tastiest part of the chicken i got one of my winglets just comes off smooth as same treatment two breast bones one hand other hand pull carcass will just rip off by itself if you want to keep the skin intact only time I'm using my knife <laughs> and then we have the breast just like that you got the tenderloins in the back you got the breast plate and everything that holds it in between crack that out Peel it to the side, peel it to the side, get rid of that sternum bone. Go in with your knife and split it in half. Don't let it spend too much time on the skin because that's still crispy. And two breasts. All I have to do now is make my plate. I'm gonna go a nice drum and thigh combo with a whole lot of that breast. A whole lot of these glazed chicken fat carrots. Oh. The maggots. And my most, one of my favorite things ever. Leeks and cheese sauce. Right on the side there. That's so valid. This is so valid. And then we finish it off with some Yorkie puds. Oh, fuck. The fucking roast dinner if I've seen one. Have a look at that. Incredible. Not done yet. And you just want to spoon it in the Yorkie puds, around the Yorkie puds, on the chicken, both sections of the chicken, carrots, yams. And that's it. That's a perfect kiwi style roast dinner. I'll give you a quick rundown of the plate. Yorkie pud gravy, Yorkie pud, chicken fat carrots, yams, chicken with gravy, chicken with gravy, leeks and cheese sauce. Oh man, this is a classic. This is a fucking classic. You, you see how we turned out. Oh man, bro, could not be happier. Eh? And actually stoked. All right, let's start off strong with the yam. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. I like the inside. The inside is like a lemony mashed potato. Super fresh, super zesty. That's so good. Please, if anyone knows the lore about yams. Let me know, Instagram or comment down below. Because they just weigh too good and I don't know much about it. Let's attack these chicken fat carrots. They're so sweet. Every damn time they're so sweet. Essentially, leeks taste like onion. But like spring onion. They're like an overgrown spring onion. Super fresh and cheese sauce, they're pretty OP. Man, that's so delicious. I haven't had leeks and cheese sauce since I was probably like eight. I really think it's a consistency thing. These motherfuckers go crazy for like their creamy, thick. I'll take a bite right here. That's so perf that's so perfectly cooked, eh? With the gravy makes it insane. Here's a piece of the breast. It literally is perfectly cooked. It literally is perfectly cooked. Still super juicy. Here's part of the tenderloin. And it literally melts in your mouth. 
with a little bit of that cheese sauce. I think I understand it now. It gives you two different sauce options. So you get that sweet, cheese, rich, and then the gravy is just a savory bomb. So within your meal, you have two different options, right? That's, that's how I think of it in my head. I'm not sure how New Zealand people will think of it, or if they even think about it like that, but chicken and cheese with their leeks for freshness. And last, last is our Yorkie pud. This is the cleanup crew with some gravy. That's next level delicious. I like to always have two. One to eat with my meal, and then another one to clean up the plate. Wow, this is so good. Have that. With the gravy, you got the chicken, the leeks and the cheese sauce. That is so f the yam zestiness draws away from like the ultimate richness of the entire meal. If you haven't had a yam before, if you're watching this overseas, go find a yam. It's called a red yam. I don't know if you can get it. We'll come to New Zealand. We got delicious foods. And I'm going to leave you all right there. If you enjoyed the content, please make sure you like, subscribe, share around. It means a whole lot to me. I'm going to smash the rest of my Kiwi Classic Roast. And I'll see all of you guys on the next one.